Bula, my name is uh, Elisa Pezi von Donevalu. I was a flight attendant for Fiji Airways for 16 years. I joined in uh, 2004. Um, flying has been a big part of my life and through it I was able to uh, meet uh, my mom after five years of flying and also uh, come across uh, a lot of things uh, on board, like uh, medical incidents, a lot of medical incidents, um, first time flyers, uh, and uh, a few rude passengers uh, along the way. Um, I'd like to share with you an incident that happened uh, towards the end of 2019, and this was a flight from Nandi to Sydney. Uh, it was a very bumpy. Uh, ride that day uh, with uh, eight cabin crew and a uh, full load of passengers of about 230 plus. So we took off from Nandi to Sydney and an hour into Sydney we came through a really rough area of turbulence. Uh, our meal service was disrupted quite a few times and uh, before landing into Sydney we were told to prepare early for landing because it was going to be really rough. So I, I got the call down the back because I was the uh, supervisor down uh, uh, economy. I had to prep uh, my crew to pack away everything. Uh, the meal carts had to be locked away in the, in the galleys, the brakes had to be down. Um, we had to make sure that all the passengers had to have their seat belts on uh, because the uh, captain had come over the PA and he said it was it was going to be rough. So we took our seats when the seatbelt sign came on and um, this I could say in my 16 years of flying was the roughest uh, area of turbulence we I'd ever come across. Um, because of this incident, we had to abort landing. And uh, when it started, uh, the captain just said, cabin crew be seated immediately. To us, that was an in indication that uh, things were going to be uh, quite bad. So we took our seats. Uh, my colleague on the right-hand side had strapped in with her belt quite tight, and uh, it all started. The, the plane began to shake so violently. As I looked down the aisle, I could see arms stretched out from across. Um, families who were separated by because of the aisle were holding hands. And then people started to scream out loud. I could hear men screaming. Uh, children were crying. Um, at the same time, I, uh, I could uh, uh, see uh, there was this lady just a few rows in front of me. She was crying. Uh, her face had started to turn red. I could hear people screaming for help, and some even up to the point of saying, oh, God, we're going to die. Uh, my colleague on the right-hand side, when I looked, she just kept saying, Jesus, Jesus, we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this. I had my left hand uh, on the uh, door handle, and uh, because it got so rough, the there was a mill cart that came flying from behind me and uh, and hit the wall. So, uh, and that was a really loud bang. My colleague and I had to hold the cart down, I with my right hand, her with her left. And at one point, uh, the aircraft dropped and the cart went flying up in the air with our arms holding the, uh, the cart. We, both of us were were shocked because uh, that was quite new for us, uh, seeing the cart go up and then hit the ground. Uh, we had to hold on tightly because we didn't want that cart flying down the, the, aisle, the, uh, the aisle, it would hit one of the passengers. We held that down and at the same time the lavatory door flung open with a bin coming out onto the wall. My right leg was up against the cart, my left leg on the other side of the wall. That was how bad it was and I had to brace myself because I was in a situation where I couldn't do much. Uh, you know, I, I was worried for the passengers in front and also for myself because something could fly, come flying at me. Um, that was, uh, as I had said, the longest five to seven minutes of my life. 
uh, we aborted landing and then uh, second time around we managed to land into Sydney. As soon as we touched down, a lady started screaming. Uh, her daughter had uh, suffered an epileptic attack. So we stood up. Uh, I grabbed the nearest oxygen bottle. Uh, my colleague ran down the aisle as well. So when I looked down, there were families throwing up, kids that were throwing up. I rushed. Uh, I gave the oxygen bottle to my uh, colleague and I told her to attend to the incident while I ran back to the galley. I grabbed gloves, wet wipes, garbage bags and bottles of water and we distributed them to uh, a few families. At the same time, uh, giving that, I had to run back and page for a doctor or any med medical personnel who was on board uh, because there was quite a few people facing the same incident. and. Um, all other cabin crew were busy too at the same time attending to uh, people who were still shocked from how rough that turbulence was. Um, we got into Sydney after that, uh, quarantine officials boarded to make sure everyone was okay. And uh, after passengers had disembarked, we still had one passenger left on board. He was in a state of shock that um, he couldn't stand and his face had gone so pale uh, so we sat with him for about um, 40, 40 minutes uh, to just ensure that he was okay to disembark uh, when after he got off uh, I checked the rest of my crew we we had an awesome team that day uh, we had to reassure ourselves that it was gonna be okay on the on the way back because um, we were hoping it'll be smooth going back. Um, I have two questions that I'm normally asked uh, on flights. How long have you been flying and uh, how do you do it? How do you go through things like this with uh, such incidents? And uh, I normally tell them, you know, uh, the years of flying builds up your confidence in such situations and um, when you're out there in the open sky, it's just you and God. And uh, every before every flight, uh, I normally pray with uh, my family uh, to make sure that I come home safe. And uh, I'm thankful to, uh, to God for giving me the breath of life to be able to go where, on whichever uh, route I'm going that day and to bring me home safely back to my family. And I'm also thankful to Fiji Airways for giving me the opportunity to... Um, fly the 16 years um, Pinaka.